Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 19th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you are running sonic wall firewalls and are using them for VPN access, well, uh, you better pay attention to the patches that were released last week. These type of firewall patches often sort of uh, get lost in the overall shovel, but uh, these are important in that they do fix a remote code execution vulnerability. Luckily, not quite as straightforward as some of the other vulnerabilities we have seen in these endpoint protection devices. It's actually sort of a good old buffer overflow. So it may take a couple of days for someone to come up with an exploit, but definitely that's something Monday when you come to work, you want to double check that all your sonic wall devices are properly patched. There doesn't appear to be an easy way to find out remotely if you are vulnerable. Now, Shodan has a list, of course, of people who run a sonic wall and they come up with about 800,000 uh, devices total. But then again, you have to run the specific uh, firmware versions that are vulnerable and you have to have the VPN server enabled to be vulnerable. And then a really neat file that we received from one of our readers. Uh, they sent us uh, what looked very much like a malicious email, but the file attachment was kind of odd. It had an extension .mmp. Now it was purchase order .mmp, but it wasn't really clear what the .mmp extension was all about. I guess a Microsoft project uses uh, this extension, but what actually happened was that this particular spammer did not send the malicious file. Instead, they sent the configuration file for their marketing software that they're using to actually send the spam. So good to know that the bad guys sometimes are making mistakes as well. And well, if you are not using SonicWall as your firewall, then you may have some time today to take a look at Parat's latest traffic analysis quiz uglywolf.net and essentially again he has some traffic captures for you and you get to figure out what happened. And the NPM project yet again had to remove four packages from its official repository that apparently were used to exfiltrate user data. Now, Bleeping Computer has a nice analysis of uh, the code affected here, and apparently it did actually uh, set up a full reverse shell to the attacker's server that then could be used to exfiltrate the data. Now, the metadata associated with these packages uh, indicates that they were created by four distinct authors. However, similar as in the code and uh, where the data was exfiltrated to suggest that it was probably all one author that created these packages. GitHub uh, was used to distribute at least some of that code. It's no longer available there, of course, also no longer available from NPM, but the bleeping computer was able uh, to find some of the code in Sonatype's automated malware detection system that retained archives of uh, the malicious source code. Sadly, there isn't really a ton that you sort of can do in these uh, cases with all the different libraries that are being included in NPM. It's really impossible sort of to review all of them. Maybe the outbound traffic uh, may have uh, been sort of suspicious, but of course, that's also something that's easily overlooked. Probably the best you can do is that you are actually aware that you're using uh, these four packages. So tracking what package you use and then being able to respond. The probably uh, most likely one that you may have included is Bluetooth Slack client. It claims to be a Slack line with all the popularity around Slack 
that may be something that people are including. Now, two of the packages had no real description and uh, the fourth npm pubman said it's a simple implementation about Linux shell login. So also really not uh, that appealing necessarily to include that in your code. And security company Voodoo, I guess that's how you pronounce it, VDOO, uh, did discover major vulnerabilities that lead to remote code execution in Qualcomm's QC map. That's essentially sort of uh, the core of many mobile phones in the Android world. And as a result, you will see a corresponding Android security bulletin and update being released that will fi fix uh, these problems. Other than applying the patch, there isn't really much you can do about it. Of course, exploitation of these types of vulnerabilities still tends to be somewhat tricky sort of in real life because you sort of have to attack them through the LTE interface. Aside from phones, uh, these uh, chipsets are also found in many of uh, these LTE routers or LTE modems that you may find in remote controlled equipment. And finally, we got a remote code execution vulnerability in the Discord desktop application, something you definitely do want to update. It's popular enough where it may get exploited. And well, it's sort of, you know, Electron striking again. Electron, this framework that allows you to use JavaScript and HTML to create a desktop applications. And as a result, often turning cross-site scripting vulnerabilities into remote code execution vulnerabilities. So again, just patch. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.